This is the countdown timer to the September equinox. As you can see, we have 12 days remaining. This will be the fifth equinox to occur since I encountered Flat Earth on YouTube in August 2016. And on each occasion, I have encouraged Flat Earthers to go out and make actual observations of the sun angles on the equinox. For some reason, they continue to remain reluctant to do so. And personally, I find that quite puzzling because Flat Earthers are often telling me that they are truth seekers and they are telling us to do our own research. However, even with the enticement of prizes such as a P900 or a Mavic Pro drone for conducting a real observation on the equinox, the Flat Earthers continue to avoid that day. In fact, I would go so far as to say that when it comes to the equinox, flat earthers bury their heads in the sand. They don't want to know about it. So why do flat earthers avoid the equinox? And quite often I see flat earthers accusing globers of not using real science. Let's take a look at the definition of science. The intellectual and practical activity encompassing the systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experiment. And a short definition down here, knowledge about or study of the natural world based on facts learned through experiments and observation. So looking at that definition again, what is science? Knowledge about or study of the natural world based on facts learned through experiments and observation. So if we conduct real experiments and if we make real observations to understand the shape of the earth we live on, that is real science. So conducting experiments and making observations of the natural world is science. Equinox experiments and equinox observations are real science because they help us learn about the shape of the earth we live on. So why do flat earthers avoid them? So in this video, I'm going to explain a very simple and very inexpensive experiment that anyone can do on the day of the equinox. What will flat earthers do? Will they do this real experiment, make a real observation, or will they waste the opportunity once again? So to understand this experiment, we're first going to look at the Kitsado Sundial, which is located directly on the equator near Quito in Ecuador. So as you can see by the people on the sundial, it is quite large. And because it is located at the equator, the gnomon is vertical. Because of its design, the shadow projected by the gnomon on the dial lines can indicate solstices, equinoxes and also months of the year with great precision. Because we are talking about the equinox, we're going to focus specifically on the line representing the path of the shadow on the equinox. So the line that we're interested in is this one, which runs directly through the center of the sundial, passing through the gnomon, and the orientation is directly east and west because that line represents the position of the shadow of the gnomon throughout the day on the equinox. It moves in a completely straight line from sunrise to sunset. And to help you understand why that occurs, this diagram shows with the blue line the path of the sun on the equator on the equinox. As you can see, it rises directly east, it passes directly overhead at local noon, and it sets directly west. So to an observer on the equinox at the equator, the sun moves in a straight line across the sky, reaching directly overhead at local noon. So for this experiment, we're going to build a small model of the Kitsado sundial. And this was made from parts I purchased from a craft shop for less than $5. It's just a piece of styrofoam. And I have the end of a paintbrush 
push through from underneath to make the vertical gnomon. I've also marked north and south lines and east and west lines because that's all we need for the purpose of this demonstration. So on the day of the equinox, the sun will rise directly east and therefore the shadow of the gnomon will be directly west. As the day continues, the shadow is getting shorter, moving in a straight line until we have no shadow at all visible at local noon because the sun is directly above the gnomon. As the day continues, the shadow will move in a straight line towards due east. My hand's wobbling a bit, but you get the idea. And then the sun sets directly west with the shadow due east. And I'll just try to do a smoother transition of that. Sun rising east. Shadows moving in a straight line until local noon and then continuing in a straight line until the sun sets. So it is this straight line shadow path on the equator on the day of the equinox that is absolute proof the sun is not moving in a circle above a flat earth because you cannot obtain a straight line shadow movement all day from sunrise to sunset if the sun is moving in a circle above the earth. If we could all jump on a plane and go to Quito and watch this on the day of the equinox it would be great but clearly that's not practical. If we can't go to the Kitsado sundial let's bring the Kitsado sundial to us. And the way we can do that is to orientate our model of the sundial to the same true angle it would be if it was located on the equator. If we were on the equator right now, the sundial would be level like that. However, I'm currently in Broome, which is 18 degrees south latitude. The curvature of the Earth is one degree per latitude. So at Broome, 18 degrees south latitude, the horizontal of the ground is 18 degrees different to what it is at the equator. So to put this model sundial at the same angle it would be at the equator, we have to tilt towards the north by 18 degrees. So we need to point this end towards true north and we have to elevate towards the equator by an angle equal to our latitude. If I was in Melbourne, Australia, 36 degrees south latitude, I would have to elevate 36 degrees. If we happen to be in the northern hemisphere, let's say Los Angeles at 34 degrees north latitude, we orientate it the opposite direction. So we're always pointing the gnomon towards the equator and we would elevate it 34 degrees. By doing this, the actual orientation of our model sundial is exactly as it would be sitting flat on the equator. So I now have the sundial tilted about 34 degrees. So it's about what we would have if I was in Sydney, Australia. Now doing so on the day of the equinox will result in a shadow path exactly the same as what we would see on the real sundial on the equator. So this is the experiment to effectively polar align your sundial and test if it results in a straight line shadow on the day of the equinox. Because it absolutely will. 
that's the geometry of the motion of the Sun. I know this already from my telescopes, the equatorial mounts that are capable of tracking the Sun using a single axis of rotation. But this experiment with a model of the Kitsado sundial angled according to latitude which puts it at the same orientation it would be at the equator confirms the curvature of the Earth. It confirms the Sun is not moving in circles above a flat Earth and it also confirms a distant Sun because this same experiment is going to work all over the Earth even if we went to the bottom of South America and tilted it accordingly it is still going to give us the same result of that straight line shadow path. So that's the experiment. As you can see, assembling the sundial is easy, it is inexpensive and setup is straightforward and yet the evidence it will provide on the day of the equinox with the shadow moving in a straight line all day is extremely powerful and this is a real observation of the natural world and therefore it is real science. This equinox experiment and this observation is real science. So what do you say flat earthers? Are you going to just keep giving us excuses on every equinox or will you take the opportunity this time to join us and do some real science?